So in this tutorial, we're going to be looking at orders of reaction, which are absolutely fundamental in looking at quantitative effects in terms of uh, kinetics or re rates of reaction. Okay, so orders of reaction basically is nice and straightforward, but some of the descriptors are a little complex. Officially, what are orders of reaction? So the order of reaction, and it's pretty long winded this, the order of reaction with respect to a given substance in a reaction, so a particular reactant, is the number or exponent that describes the effect that its changing concentration has on the initial rate of reaction. Now, let's put that into plain English, shall we? However we change the concentration of a reactant, what effect does that have on the rate of the reaction? So if I, uh, you know, we know that, say, increasing concentrations of reactants can increase rate, but this quantifies it, okay? So if I double the concentration of a reactant, does the rate double or does it go up by four times? If I triple the concentration of a reagent, or a reactant, you know, does the constant does the uh, rate of reaction change at all? Okay, so exactly what happens by how much does the rate increase if we increase the concentration of a reactant? That's basically what it's saying. Okay, now that sounds really complex. Like like I said, this is the official definition here, but let me show you what I mean. That's the most uh, simple thing to do here. So there are basically three orders of reaction that we need to know about. And graphically, I'm just gonna show you what I mean. So just over here, I'm just gonna go ahead and sketch a graph where we've got initial rate of reaction on the y-axis and the changing concentration of, let's say, a particular reactant along the x-axis, okay? So as we look at changing in concentration, what's happening to the rate of the reaction? And just a quick pointer, I'm using square brackets to denote concentration here. So of our three orders, the first one is zero order. Well, a zero order basically means that a change in concentration of a reactant has no effect on the initial rate of reaction. So like no effect whatsoever. Now that's a little bit alien concept because we've been taught previously that, you know, oh, increasing concentration increases rate. You know what? Sometimes it doesn't. Okay. So we can say that we could double, triple, quadruple the concentration of this reactant that has a zero order and it will not have any effect on rate. So in terms of a graph, Basically, that means it's going to look like this. We can increase concentration from left to right all we like, but there is zero effect on the initial rate. So it's not going to get any quicker whatsoever. It doesn't matter how much you increase the concentration of that reactant. Now, next up, we've got first order. So first order, that basically means that a change in concentration of a reactant has a proportional effect on the initial rate. Slightly ran out of room there, but essentially it's proportional. So what we're saying is if you double the concentration of this reactant, then the initial rate is going to double. If you triple the concentration of that reactant, the initial rate is also going to triple. So what we mean in terms of a graph here is that it's a straight line relationship. Okay. If you double one, the other doubles. If you quadruple one, the other quadruples. If you half one, the other halves. Okay. So first order, it's a directly proportional relationship. Next up, of course, you probably guessed it's second order. So second order, when you change the concentration, has an exponential effect on initial rate. Now, what I mean by that is it goes up squared, okay? So if you double the concentration of a reactant that is second order, the rate of reaction is gonna go up by a factor of four, okay? It's gonna quadruple. If you triple the concentration, it's gonna go up by a factor of nine, okay? So this is an exponential relationship. So I'm gonna show you on the graph exactly what I mean by that. Hopefully it works out all right. 
So looking at a graph as you increase concentration, then initial rate is going to go up exponentially. So you see this classic exponential curve here. Okay, so that's what they look like. Basically, in terms of a sketch graph, when you increase concentration, what happens to initial rate? So let's put this into some context. Okay, just a real simple reaction here. So let's say in a reaction, we've got two reactants. We've got A and B, basically C and D. We don't really give a monkeys about what the products are, but what we're concerned about here is, well, what are the orders of reaction with A and B? Well, let's say the rate in this reaction is stated to be first order with respect to the concentration of A. And that's how we write these things here, okay? So rate is first order with respect to the concentration of A. So what we can say is that if the concentration of A doubles, the rat doubles, and that's not what I meant, the rate doubles, okay? So if the concentration of A doubles, the rate doubles. And also if you increase the concentration of A by three times, so if the concentration of A triples, then of course your rate is also gonna triple. But don't forget, like I said, if the concentration of A is halved, then your rate is also going to halve, okay? So it's directly proportional, uh, whichever way you look at it for first order. Likewise, we can say, for argument's sake, that let's say the rate is second order with respect to the concentration of B. So if it's second order, if the concentration of B doubles, the initial rate increases by a factor of four. It's exponential, in other words, two squared. So if I've doubled it, it's gonna increase by two squared. In other words, a factor of four. Likewise, if we increase the concentration of B by three times, so if concentration of B triples, the rate increases by a factor of nine because that's three squared, okay? So whatever you have, if say, even if the concentration of B has gone up by 1.6, the rate is going to increase by a factor of 1.6 squared, okay? So that's what we mean by exponential. Of course, zero order, it doesn't matter what the concentration of that reagent is, as long as it's there, okay, then um, it's, go it's not going to have an effect on the actual rate of reaction. But of course, you do need to have some of that there for a reaction to happen, but the concentration of it doesn't affect how quickly the reaction happens. So there's our zero, first, and second order. There's one last thing that we need to be aware of, though. That's the overall order for the reaction, okay? So the, in questions, they love asking you this. Once they've put you through the, your drills in terms of orders of reaction and stuff, um, they'll say, what's the overall order of the action? Well, the overall order of reaction basically is the sum of all the orders of reaction for all your reactants, okay? So in the equation above, for example, well, if we remind ourselves that in the above reaction, first order with respect to the concentration of A, and it's second order with respect to the concentration of B. So first order one plus the second order, which is two represented by two, makes sense, that equals three. So for the above reaction, if it's first order with respect to A and second order with respect to B, we add those together to give the overall order for reaction, which is three. Okay. Of course, if you have another reactant in there, a reactant that is zero order, of course, that's plus zero, but you know what? That doesn't make any difference to it whatsoever, does it? Okay, but um, obviously first and second orders, you just add them up for all your reactants and that will give you the overall order for reaction. So summary, we've got this kind of, I don't know, definition up here that's hard, hard to get your tongue around, okay? But essentially, it's just a number that describes the effect that changing concentration has on the rate of reaction, the initial rate of reaction. We've got zero, first and second. It won't be anything other than that. They're the only three that they can call on in the exam. And of course, obviously we've got these relationships here, which you must remember. First and second order, that's where we do get changes. And of course your overall order is where we just sum all of the orders of reaction for all your reactants. And the sum of those gives you the overall order for your reaction. So that's our intro to orders of reaction. Next couple of tutorials are going to be looking at how we deduce orders of reaction uh, in the different ways that we can.